Hi, it's good to welcome you back to yet another of our Worship Wednesdays. And today we're going to have another look at something that might be just a little bit different. We're going to look at heroes. We're going to look at who are your worship heroes? Who were the worship heroes in the Bible? What effect did their lives have upon the things that they wrote? So I wonder who your worship hero is. Maybe if you're of a slightly older uh, generation, you think about people like Graham Kendrick, who wrote some amazing songs and did turn the worship world upside down for his time. Maybe you like to watch The Gazers um, on YouTube. Uh, maybe you love the music of Don Moen, or even further back, you love the Wesley hymns, all brilliant and all good. Maybe if you're of a younger generation, you love to wait to see what Bethel is writing or Chris Tomlin is writing. Or maybe you just love music and you just love the best of all of them, which is great. But you know, there were also quite a lot of worship leader heroes in the Bible. And today we're going to look at some of them. The reason I say some of them is that they were called the sons of Korah. You may never have heard of them, but if you go through the book of Psalms, you'll see that quite a few of the songs were written by the sons of Korah. So who were they? Well, the sons of Korah is one of those lovely titles that might be like Mercy Me or Casting Crowns today. It's their group name. And I can just imagine them all huddled together or sat together around their tents at night or maybe in the temple, in the green room of whatever the temple was, um, writing these songs and, and learning them and then teaching them to the people to worship God. So who were these sons of Korah? Korah is a very interesting character in the Bible. There are two or three different people with the name sons of Korah, but the one that this one refers to was a Levite, and he was a, a leader of the clan. And if you go and read in Numbers 16, you'll realise there was a, a situation that arose with Korah that um, was not very good. Korah was a Levite, so as I said, he was a clan leader, he had his family with him, but he decided that Moses, who was his uncle, uh, was actually uh, far too big for his Egyptian sandal shoes, um, and so with a, with a, with his immediate family and with some others, some other Benjamites and people, they rebelled against Moses. And basically, what they said to him is, "We're all holy. We've all been brought out of Egypt. Who on earth do you think you are to be claiming to lead us?" And God was really angry with uh, with Korah um, and with the the people who had rebelled, and he told Moses to separate them. Um, from the rest of the people and then there was a, an almighty earthquake of some description um, and a hole opened up and the whole of them were swallowed into this hole. What a thing to have to live with. What a generational thing to have to live with. We love to look back don't we and see what our generation of people behind us were like. Well Cora had a really bad uh, reputation which he left to his generational people in front of him but you know that didn't stop them and it didn't um, it didn't hold them back from fulfilling the promises that God had given the Levites. And that's really important for us, isn't it? Because sometimes things happen in our life or in previous generations, things that affect how we feel and how we think about all the things that happen. And, and this is just an encouragement to you that it does not define who you are by what's happened previously. In 1 Chronicles 6, we see that David's appointing singers and musicians, and it says this. These are the men David put in charge of the music in the house of the Lord after the ark came to rest there. They ministered with music before the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. And you know, some of the heroes, some of the, the top guys, some of the top professionals were people like Asaph, who was also related to uh, the sons of Korah, and other people who came across the, from the line of Samuel. So there's a wonderful depth of, of people that David appointed, and the song, sons of Korah were some of them. If you read their psalms, if you look through their psalms, you'll see that there's a theme that runs through a lot of them. Beautiful theme. Um, they desire intently to be close to God. One of their psalms says, in Psalm 42, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And it goes on to talk about deep calls to deep. 
These sons of Korah were not going to repeat the patterns of the past. They had a desire in their heart to write songs that echoed their desire to stay close to God. In Psalm 84, you see this come up again. It's actually a desire to be so close to God that we have that lovely verse that we know really well where it says, Better is one day in your courts, Lord, than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. In terms of what I've just told you, that the, the tents where Cora and the original grandparents, great great grandparents, however many generations back, of the sons of Cora, they dwelt in the tents of the wicked. And you can see the heart coming out of these wonderful worship leaders who didn't want to be, be defined by the past, but wanted to stay so close to God. And my encouragement to you today, through what we've learned about Korah, is that you don't have to be defined by your past, by generational past, things that happened in generations gone, or by the things that have happened to you. That just like the sons of Korah, you can come and bring your song of worship, your silence, your meditation of worship. Remember, we've talked about worship being so much more than just singing. You are worthy because of what Jesus did to bring your worship to God and have that desire in your hearts like the sons of Korah did. And you see that repeated in various of the other Psalms that they have written, that their desire is not to dwell in the past, but to dwell close in the courts of God and stay very close to him. So as you worship, whether you're singing, whether you're silently meditating, whether you're studying scripture, whether you're coloring a picture, whether you're walking in nature, remember you are not defined by your past. When you worship the God of the universe, you are defined right now by how God feels about you. So you have that desire in your heart, as Korah's sons did, to dwell close to God and to worship him in all the majesty that he has.